Good morning all. Uh, guys, in the today's session, let us we'll continue the, our discussion on uh, SQL queries. Uh, before starting the today's session, guys, uh, let us we'll try to recall the things as what we have discussed in the previous session. In the previous session, guys, we started our discussion regarding SQL queries, right? So there uh, we took one small scenario, right, where it consists of uh, the following tables. That means uh, branch, student, then followed by book, author and borrow. Uh, Let us we will try to recall the story behind all these tables. We are having a list of branches, right? Plenty of branches. All branches are recorded in a branch table, right? So, th in this branch table where each is identified based on branch ID as a unique number, right? As a key attribute. Then having a name and HOD and all. Then after that we discussed about a branch, uh, sorry, a college having a uh, student or we can consider uh, a student belongs to only one branch but a branch might contains uh, plenty of students then each student is identified based on uh, usn right so uniquely identified based on usn so that usn is a key attribute then after that we discussed about a book right so where book table contains a uh, list of books uh, a bunch of books right and each book is identified based on book id and each book has written by one author, but an author can write can write uh, can be an author can uh, write many books, right? So that also we are recording here by making that EID as a foreign key here. Then after that, uh, each book belongs to some branch, right? So that we are recording it in terms of BID as foreign key here, right? Then after that, we discussed about uh, a list of authors. So all list of authors are recorded in author table, right? So, where EID is a primary key, key attribute. Next, after that, uh, student will go for uh, borrowing of some books, right? So, all which student borrowed which book on what date, right? So, all sir, things we have recorded in a separate table that we call the name borrow table, right? So, where it indicates an USN, where it uh, gives a, 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 or it facilitates as an USN to borrow many books, either on the same date or on different dates and a book can also be borrowed by many students right many usn right so that also we have uh, shown here with the help of this borrow table then after that we discussed few queries like uh, we started our discussion with very simple query like uh, list the details of students who are all uh, studying in second sem mca where it requires two tables can you remember guys what role so it requires a branch table and as well as student table right because i want to check that branch name to be an mca right as per the question what they have given right here so that the branch name should be an MCA and semester should be equal to second. So that I can obtain it by using a branch name from by using a branch table where B name equal to MCA and a branch uh, and a semester which is present in student table where sum equal to two like that we can write. So and along with that what is a common attribute branch ID where it is a bridging attribute right bridge acts as a bridge attribute. So where it is a foreign key here right. So in the student table uh, how we can do. So when we are using a multiple tables, never forget, we learned one mantra guys, what is that? So join the tables with the help of the bridging attribute, right? So student.bid should be equal to brand.bid. So otherwise it becomes what? Tuple multiplication that we called by name, that quotation product. Always a quotation product consists of uh, spurious tuples that means unwanted unrelated uh, things right so wrong tuples it contains right so to avoid that always never forget to match write a condition on matching attribute between the tables right where it is all mentioned in a from class right so then after that uh, we discussed the next second query that we called the name um, students who are not borrowed any books right so for this uh, uh, the logic viewed is uh, if uh, USNs which are present in a borrowed table, it is an indication that uh, the student definitely has borrowed at least one book. But what we want guys, exactly opposite to that, that negation to that, what it means, a student have not borrowed any books to get it. So student USN must be present in a, should be present in a student table and those USNs which are not present in a borrowed table, then definitely it is a clear indication that the student have never borrowed any books, right? To do that, we went with what uh, writing of uh, a nested query, right? Query nesting. There we have written first, uh, we went with a, a reverse answer. What is that? Student have, who are all borrowed the books. How can I obtain? It is from borrow table. Select USN from borrow. Fine. Then in its outer, as an inner query. Then its outer query, what we did? Select star from student. Yes, retrieve all details of a student, right? From student where 
USN should not be in the list of bar, all right? This is what the query we have written. Fine. Next, uh, we move to the uh, third query. There in the third query we have written, it's a query quite interesting. What is that, guys? So there, uh, they're asking us to display student details along with the branch name and which all the books the student has borrowed and who, which, who is the author written that book, right? So, and who is the publisher and the student belongs to second sem and uh, the branch should be an MC, right? So, this is what a question. So, could be, I think we have uh, learned with this query how to join multiple tables that also be required sometimes, right? Where this, require, this query requires that all table to be joined, right? I think to get a student details, USN student name, also things we require a student table. For a brand name equal to MC and brand name also I want to display. So, for that it requires branch table. How can I join? So, student dot branch ID is equal to brand dot branch ID. Again, we have viewed an aliasing concept, right? So, with the help of that, where it avoids that uh, the condition, it makes the job of condition writing between the two tables, it's common attribute condition that made the things to be more simpler, right? So, with the help of, with the help of aliasing, right? Then after that, we discovered, uh, and even it requires a book name. How can I get a book name? To get a book name, I should know because there is no direct uh, relationship between the book to the student and as well as to the branch, right? So branch ID, it is there, but uh, we should know about whether the student have borrowed that book or not, right? So to get it, where to go? It requires that borrow table to visit, right? So since uh, that borrow table contains an USN and student table also contains an USN, if this USN, if it is present in a borrow table, it's a clear indication that the student have borrowed at least one book, right? So what we did is borrow.usn is equal to student.usn like that we built, right? So three tables were joined now. Then after this, um, I want uh, the student, the student have borrowed, but what's the book? So book ID, borrow table, book ID should be equal to what? Book table, book ID, like that uh, we joined those two tables. So for that, the four tables were joined, but I want to know who is the author. Look at this one, the question, what? It's asking, it's asking what author name also to be displayed, to get it, to get it. What is that? I got the book name. If I say, what is the author name? Uh, when I ask this uh, AD, hey, Mr. AD, what is your name? Then it takes me to where? To author table, right? That means they join the book table, author ID with what? Author table, author ID. Then easily I can retrieve that respective. That means the corresponding author names, right? So that's it. So this is what a beautiful thing where we, it requires all four tables, all uh, five tables to join, right, to get the data. That to what in a particular, in a right manner. So this is what a beauty of this query. So let me, then after that, I think this is the last query could be, I think uh, we discussed in the previous session. What is that? So list the, display the number of books uh, written by each author. Each author has written how many books. To solve this, what is that? Each author written how many books. It's an indication that group based on author ID, then count the number of books that means each book is identified by what guys based on uh, book id bk id right here as per this example group based on author id and count a book id so that i come to know that each author has written how many books and to display that corresponding author name just join it this ad takes us to where to author table and join with author table and get the corresponding author name that's it that means this is a query where it requires group by class to make use and the aggregate function count. I want to count the book IDs, right? So that's it. So let me start the new session. I'm with few more interesting queries in this session. Let me start guys. Fifth one, display the student details who borrowed more than two books. What's the question? Students details. Student should borrow how many books? More than two books, right? So only such kind of students I want to display. So can you tell me guys, based on this database, which all the tables are required? To solve this query, students who borrowed more than two books. To, get, to know about always, I said in the previous session itself, even I'm uh, stressing a lot on this. Always when we go for solving a query, first come up with a mathematical answer and build that mathematical answer with the help of keys. Suppose if you are successful in retrieving a particular key, then there is no big thing in retrieving that corresponding names. Easily I can get it by just visiting that particular table by writing one simple joining condition with that table, right? So that's it. So here also same thing. I want to list student. List student means get me the USNs. That's it. Get me the list of USNs. So what's the speciality of those USNs? And those USNs who borrowed, right, you know, 
स्टूडेंट मीन्स यू एस एंस बारोड वट गेज मोर दैन टू बुक्स हाउ कैन आई गेट दैट स्टूडेंट हैव बारोड अ बुक आर नॉट दैट इन्फॉर्मेशन कैन ओनली ओबटेन विद द हेल्प ऑफ बारो टेबल हियर आई एम हैविंग ए यू एस एन यू नो दिस वॉट वी आर लुकिंग दैट मीन्स लिस्ट द यू एस एंस हु हैव बारोड एट लीस्ट सॉरी वॉट मोर दैन टू बुक्स मोर दैन टू मीन्स मीन्स वॉट ग्रेटर दैन टू द कंटेंट शुड बी वॉट ग्रेटर दैन मोर दैन टू If it is more than or equal to two, then greater than or equal to two. That we'll write. More than two means greater than two. I can write, or I can go with what greater than or equal to three because three is greater than two. Either you can go with this condition or with this. Both of them are one or the same because we don't have two point five here, you know. As per this, fine. Two point five tuple. It is not there. Huh. So let me go with starting. So based on this, uh, let me take you to the SQL. As what you said, that borrow table is required. I am having a borrow in front of you. So based on this borrow table, guys, can you predict uh, uh, which question become an answer as part of this query? That means the question: Students who have borrowed more than two books. So any predictions? Yes, fine. Ten is an answer. Why US and ten become an answer? Why ten become an answer? So since ten occurs thrice, so for that, no. With respect to ten, I'm having a hundred, one not one, one not two, right? It's what one thing. But there could be possibility that ten could borrow. This is also one more interesting thing. Uh, let me uh, make this query to be more what. Uh, let's we'll take it to a simpler first then make it complicated then how uh, each and every attribute that means every condition or every attribute what we write it in aggregate function uh, how it plays a major role that also we'll take it here so look at this one guys 10 borrowed three books that means three means more than two so for that greater than two so for that we'll retrieve that corresponding 10 then whether 11 become an answer no in the mind that means in our mind how we solved this one is first we grouped based on what each student borrowed how many books it's an indication that group based on usn right you know based on usn and get the corresponding book id is let me write it here 10 connected with what are the book id is 100 101 102 is an usn connected with the book id these are all book ids book ids 100 101 and 102 this is what a one group frame right as part of this data then there's a one more group form right here what is that 11 usn 11 which is connected with what because we are grouping based on usn i want to find out each student that means each usn borrowed how many books so 11 connected with what a book id called 100 fine what is the next step to be done guys i am uh, writing a mathematical solution for this let me write a picture here first group based on usn then what count how many books they have borrowed 1 2 3 count go with count you know count what book ids book ids i am counting right book id so it becomes what 1 2 3 3 fine what about this this count becomes what 1 and what is the next step this count should be what count should be greater than greater than Two. Then only we can say the student have borrowed more than two books. So for that, greater than two, this is the only condition follows, right? The matches. So for that, so retrieve that corresponding USN that is ten. Then later, so join that USN re retrieved USN, right? So you compare this with the student table USN, and easily you can get a student corresponding name, right? Name, address, and all. So my question is, uh, let me go with uh, coding this picture. This is what a picture we need to code, right? Mathematical solution. So let me start. Select the query to be written is select query, right? Select based on what? Let me take out. So let's we'll go with uh, coding that picture. What we did? First we visited which table? Borrow table. Let me go with from borrow. Yes, borrow B. We can write from borrow B. What to do? first group let me go with grouping group based on what based on usn borrow table usn borrow means what b so that b dot usn let me write b dot usn fine now once if i write from borrow group by b dot usn this part of a 
logic this part of a code is ready guys what's the next step next step is to be done is count right you know count to what book ids first i want to list book ids along with the usn let me take this as the first half answer what is that usn from where borrow table b dot usn then you said count count what count book ids we counted a book ids right so b dot bkid book id from borrow then group by b dot usn i said once if i write like this then we'll get usn with a count 10 with 3 11 with 1 whether we'll get this answer or not later we'll go with writing this condition and retrieving a particular usn as part of the query condition right so let me go with that guys yes we got a data like this usn 10 borrowed three books and 11 borrowed only one book yes done so almost we are very much nearer to our query answer right so the next step to be done we need to check some condition condition on what whether it is on usn no condition on on this aggregate function count right so let me recall the same query right the same query i got so condition if i want to check if any condition if i want to check on this aggregate function already i said where where class doesn't permit us to write any conditions any conditional checking things right operations on in the where class so where we can write always for that only we are having a dedicated clause in sql that we call by name having class right so let me go with writing group by and having class always to be written once after group by only right so look at this one never forget the order guys first class to be always written is select then from then after where then after group by after group by only we can write a having right so this is what the order we need to follow we can skip in between anyone but the order before select i cannot write a group by or i cannot write a where or i cannot write a from the order we must follow right either you can miss anyone where i don't want to write only i'll write group by it is allowed but i it doesn't permit us to write a where class after group by no it is not permitted right that means uh, before having i should write a uh, group by but after having i cannot write a group by it is all not permitted huh as part of this come back to the example let me write already this part of a code 10 with 3 11 with 1 is over now i want to check a condition so on aggregate function any conditions if i want to check on aggregate function make use of having class so having class always to be written where guys once after group by class so for that after group by i'll go with checking having having what count of book id let me go with writing count of b dot bkid book id right fine it should be greater than what guys 2 it should be greater than 2 let me check yes we got answer 10 with 3 right fine so now uh, i want to display that corresponding names right i want to display corresponding name for example guys uh, before uh, anyway just uh, uh, first we'll, let us we'll try to display the corresponding name i got a usn usn is 10 then if i want to get that corresponding name i should ask hey mr 10 what is your name when i say usn belongs to where to a borrow table borrow table usn right so this one borrow table usn so when i ask this 10 suddenly it takes us to where guys look at follow this uh, what this line then it takes us to a student table usn and it says you compare this usn with this usn and you'll get that corresponding name address same and all right branch and other other things so for that the one more table to be used in the same query is what is that not only borrow even we want a one more table that is what student table right so to get the corresponding name i like student fine let me call my name yes and it says what I am having this usn to get the corresponding name it this line says what join it with the student table usn so for that this is a condition to be written what is that b dot usn that means borrow dot usn should be equal to what student s yes dot usn so basically is a simple condition you know general condition and attribute so which class to make use in sql for writing conditions on these uh, general attribute 
that means the table attribute we are having a class called where right where b dot usn is equal to s dot usn right like this we have written you know that's it then what's the next step retrieve me the correspond what is the purpose of writing also things to get a name right let me go with writing s dot name student name right yes name belongs to student student means yes as part of this example fine look at this one usn name arjun is it true let me check that means the name of a student with usn 10 should be what arjun as part of this example let me check is it true or not yes look at this one guys 10 means arjun we are getting 10 arjun 3 right so let me take you to the in depth of uh, this problem statement There could be some situation, guys. The student 10, what's the question? Student who have borrowed more than two books. Let me assume, guys. Let me change the table. I'll do some small modification, right? So then what happens? Can you tell me? Update, borrow, set. Carefully observe the thing. Very interesting. BKD equal to 100, where USN is equal to... 10. Huh, equal to missing that's it fine yes done let me go with this select star from book sorry borrow yes now it becomes what so all four students have borrowed only one book either on the same date or on different date. Let me go with uh, could be my friends are having some uh, problem. Let me assume this as a date as four because few of my friends might say so two on the same could be that morning has written back and again uh, borrowed right? that also be there. So let us assume this could be a same date or on the same, on the same date uh, but at different time. Mm. So 10 borrowed now tell me guys 11 borrowed one book 10 borrowed how many books can you say it has three books. No, borrowed same book three times, right? This is what a question. 10, 100, 100, 100, 10 with 100. Here we are having 10 borrowed three books, but what? All three books are the same books, right? 100 only book. Right? It's an indication that it's the same book. So 10 borrowed only one book, you know, but same book borrowed thrice. Can you call it as that student who borrowed three books? What is the question? Student who have borrowed three books. More, sorry, more than two books. That means three books. Let me rerun uh, my query. This is what a query we have written, you know, select b.usn. This is what a query we have written greater than two. As part of this example, that means this data of this borrow table, whether 10 become an answer? No. Why? 10 borrowed, not three books, only the one book thrice. That we don't want. Whom we want to retrieve? Student who borrowed more than two books. That means three books and all three to be have a, a different US, uh, book IDs right only such USNs we want to display because this 10 borrowed same book thrice that I don't want student who borrowed three different books that I want so as part of this example already we have written a query whether this query works or not the expected answer is 10 no never borrowed what has not borrowed three books 11 borrowed three books no only one book so that the expected answer as part of this data is empty set right no data no usn it should display right empty set is the expected answer let me check huh but it's showing 10 arjun 3 why you know it is wrong it's an indication that the query as what we have written is not all time true suppose if any data updated any could be that this also be there you know student uh, same book can be uh, possibility that few of them are having a very much uh, having a very much affection towards DBMS, let's assume, right? They could borrow a same book, uh, same DBMS book thrice, four times, five times, ten times, right? Who knows you, nah, right? So they might borrow the same book multiple times. During that time, can you consider it as that student has borrowed multiple books? No, you know. So during the time, but our query says, uh, again, retrieving 10 Arjun, right? Could be wrong, right? No, it could be definitely wrong, right? So then how can I write my query where it gives me a right answer always? Because this is a query as what we have written. It is right only for this data. That data is what we have written uh, earlier, right? 
So, but when data changes, our query become wrong. But uh, always, never forget guys, always when you are writing a query, think in a different way, right? Think in multiple dimension, right? Could be possibility that user might write a updated data in, like this. During that time, you should never say, sir, one minute I'll uh, recheck, I'll uh, rewrite my query. No. It is not possible, you know. So whether, whether every during in IRCTC, when you want to book any ticket, every time uh, in the back end, whether they'll rewrite uh, different different queries, no, you know, they'll write it once, and the same thing will work for every, for multiple uh, uh, ticket request, you know. Here also same thing. Always we need to go with writing such a generalized query where it should work for almost all possible inputs, right? So always we need to keep that thing in our mind that means could be possibility that the data could be like this also right so and uh, when data becomes like this then also without any modification our query should work right so like that we have to write a query any guesses guys what changes to be written then how to solve 10 is wrong expected is empty set so this become as part of this query it become like this 10 connected with 100 100 100 and 11 with 100 during the time again we need to count it yes we are counting then count becomes one two three but actually we are saying no it is only one count is not three here count is only one so when it becomes one and when it becomes three guys so we are expecting when all three are different if there is no repetition then only you should treat it as one two three then only the count should increment otherwise it should, uh, should not consider that repeated entry as a separate, right? It has to uh, filter it out, right? So this is what I expected thing we are looking. So to solve it, guys, to solve it, let me check. Huh. To do this, I said, how can I avoid? I don't want the repeated things. I want only the filtered thing. That means each value, suppose if it is, if 100 occurred 100 times, I want to take it only once for counting purpose, right? This is what we are looking. To achieve it, I said one interesting keyword which is available in DBMS. What is that, guys? Yes, distinct. I want to I want to keep these things only the distinct values, right? So for that, when I go with distinct, then the repeated hundreds will be considered only once, and it becomes what one with hundred only one time. Then when I apply on the count, then it becomes what? 100, 1 and count becomes what? 1. Is that 1 greater than 2? No guys, that's it. Let me go with this. What changes to be made in the code? Go with counting, but count what? Only the distinct values, distinct count. And even in a display also, make it as what? Distinct. Yes, that's it. What's the answer? Empty set we got, right? Could be few of my friends are having a, a doubt. Let me solve all your doubt from borrow. So one such snap, I'll write. So let me take up, guys, uh, I want to, let's say here we are having 10, 10, 10, 11. Let me write select only US and column. How exactly a distinct works for that? From borrow, we are having. We are having what 10 thrice and 11 only one time. When I write select USN, how we are having you know the, the USN column, the whole column is displaying as it is, that's it, without any change. But what I want is, I want to keep each value only once. Suppose if it repeated, look at this one, 10, 10, 10, that I don't want to have, I want to have it only once, that filtered output, distinct input I want. So distinct output I want. To do that, let me write distinct, here, select distinct USN. Then what happens? We'll see. Look at this one. 10 tick took what? Only once. Here also same thing. What happens is when I go with having count of distinct book ID, then repeated entry will be uh, taken out. Suppose, so could be a few of my friends might having a question like this. So borrow you are having, sir. Select uh, start from borrow. Let me go with adding a few more values. Insert into student, sorry, student all, which one? Borrow. Values, which are the values? Let me take 10 who borrowed 101 and who borrowed on some date like 2020, 
and this date he borrowed let us assume. So now what is the expected answer select star from borrow. So 10 borrowed 101 not 1 2 books right. So is that an answer uh, 10 become an answer no count becomes what again an empty set let me check yes empty set. But let me go with adding a one more row for this. So 10 with 1 not 2 let me add either on the same date let us assume yes done let me go with select star from borrow. So we are having 10 with 100 10 with uh, 101 10 with 102 and 100 uh, 2 more times but during that time it should not give me a count as 10 borrowed uh, 5 books no 5 times 10 is there. Why I am stressing on this is do not go few of my friends might go with sir count of years and even that also gives the same answer why to go with count of book id that what there count of distinct book id why we need to keep those things uh, those minute things even those minute things also becomes a, a very big thing that only look at this one the simple distinct keyword made our query the whole query to be wrong right so for that we should uh, keep all such things in our mind right especially when we are writing our queries. Look at this one, count of years and that also earlier we said oh so that also becomes a right answer but at this point of time when I say count of years and so during that time count of years and becomes years and occurred 5 times so for that it says years and 10 borrowed 5 books. No, student years and visited 5 times library and borrowed same book thrice and 2 more other books right that is it. It is an indication that US and 10 borrowed only 3 books, right? 100, 101, 102, right? So that count it should give me. So what to do? Count of distinct book ID, right? Book ID, that only I should write. So during that time, 100, these 100 to, to be what? Shortlisted as 1 time 100, that is it. It makes along with this, this one. All this becomes what? One single group and 11 separate group. Out of this, since we have written a distinct book ID, so for that this 100 will be listed only once filtered, filtered out rest of the two hundreds, then repeated entries, then 101, then followed by 102. Then with respect to 11, we are having only one entry that is 100. Now it counts. What is the count? Now count becomes what? 3, which is greater than 2. That is why it lists. Let me check whether our query will work for this or not. This is what a query we have written, you know. Select USN, I will take you back. Select B.USN, name, then count of what? Distinct book ID from borrow and student and one bridging condition, right? Between student and borrow, then group by USN and having count of what? Distinct book ID and it should be greater than 2. Look at this one 10. How many books? 3 books, right? 3 books. This is what answer. Never forget, very important. Especially when we are writing, when you are choosing an attribute for an aggregate function, it's wonderful, right? So, especially the distinct, the, the role played by a distinct is really amazing, right? So, fine. So, thank you guys. Uh, thanks for your patience listening. Uh, tomorrow, I will come up with uh, one more uh, interesting. Uh, uh, query right so we'll solve it so never forget of how the use of uh, distinct right so here thank you thank you for patience listening